This right here is wild fermented pomegranate wine. And because it's wild fermented, I wanted to know what microbes were responsible for the fermentation. So let's check out this pomegranate wine under the microscope. <laughs> Welcome back everyone, I'm Robin from This Blog's Neat and I made pomegranate wine. The recipe is really complicated so you might wanna grab a piece of paper and a pen to jot it down. I took pomegranates, took out all the seeds, peeled them, I don't know if that's what it's called, and then placed them in this jar and squished them with my hand to get all the juice out of those seeds and then I let it sit. That's it. Whatever microbes were on the pomegranates naturally or whatever microbes were in the atmosphere were what was responsible for fermenting this pomegranate wine. And I started this wine about a month and a half ago. The starting specific gravity was 1.066. No sugar was added to this, so this just came from the pomegranate juice itself. And right now it's sitting at 1.015. So it didn't ferment out completely, but that's all right. Like those wild microbes did a pretty good job. That would mean that this wine is sitting at 6.7% ABV around there. And I'm not sure that that technically qualifies it as a wine, according to TTB labels, since they talk about wine ranging anywhere from 7 to 24% ABV. But yeah, this is essentially a low ABV wine that I've made. And I want to give a shout out to my friends Bishaw and Amanda, who actually gave me these pomegranates that they grew in their backyard. Now about 20 pomegranates went into this jar right here. I'll be lucky if I get like over a liter of actual wine once I drain out the seeds. <laughs> so a lot of work for a very little bit of wine. But when I started the fermentation, it didn't seem like there was a very active ferment going on. So I wasn't even sure that it was actually fermenting. That is until I took the specific gravity and saw that it was in fact fermenting. It took less than two weeks to get down to this specific gravity that it's at now. And I wanted to know what microbes were responsible for this fermentation. So I put them under the microscope. And lo and behold, I saw a ton of fission yeast. If you've watched any of my Dunder videos, you have heard me talk about fission yeast before. So what is fission yeast? Why is it called fission yeast? Binary fission is a form of asexual reproduction. And the other form of asexual reproduction is budding. So in yeast, you will see both binary fission, and budding. Most commonly you see budding because Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a budding yeast. This is like the most widely known yeast species. And budding is kind of what it sounds like. It's where the parent cell creates a daughter cell and it looks like a little bud that starts to grow off of the cell and gets larger until it becomes its own, its own cell. Binary fission, on the other hand, is when the parent cell just splits itself in half. There you go. So the most popular fission yeast is Schizosaccharomyces pombae, and the most popular budding yeast, or the most popular yeast, is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Now you see Schizosaccharomyces species pop up in rum in regards to talking about dunder, which tends to decrease the pH or acidify the wash. And Schizosaccharomyces is able to ferment in more acidic conditions where uh, Saccharomyces might be suppressed. So pomegranate juice has a pH ranging from 2.9 to 3.2, according to Google. So it's very acidic. Now, I'm not sure if there's 
Schizosaccharomyces pombae in my pomegranate wine fermentation. I'm not sure what type of fission yeast it is, but there are five different species in the Schizosaccharomyces genus. There's S. pombe, there's S. japonicus, S. octosporus, S. cryophilus, which was discovered in 2010 and thrives in cooler conditions, hence the cryo. And the most recently discovered species of Schizosaccharomyces was found in 2019 called S. osmophilus. There are two different variations of S. pombe and two different variations of S. japonicus. So it's possible that there are a wide variety of Schizosaccharomyces species in this fermentation. Now, Schizosaccharomyces is thought to have diverged from the Saccharomyces cerevisiae lineage 300 million to 1 billion years ago. Is that cool? That's very cool. And S. pombe was the second free-living single-cell organism to have its genome entirely sequenced. S. cerevisiae was the first one, of course. And in 2001, Paul Nurse won a Nobel Prize for his work on studying the cell cycle of S. pombe. Those are some fun facts. Schizosaccharomyces is cool. So let's check out those fission yeast under the microscope. Now you might be wondering how this pomegranate wine tastes. 
But actually, before I taste it, I do want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel and for being a part of the neat community over on Patreon. You guys already got a look at this pomegranate fermentation when I started it and when I added some more pomegranates to it. And if you, the viewer, would also like to join us over on Patreon, I've got a link in the description below. So the color of this, oh man, it doesn't look as cool in the camera as it does in person. Oh, that makes me sad. But this has a really, really nice, like magenta, burgundy, I'm not sure what color, but it's like a, a rich pink color that's really cool. And right away I get nuts on the nose, like dry roasted peanuts. I'm also getting some fresh cranberries. And of course I'm getting some like tart pomegranate notes. There's also a little floral note that's reminding me of jasmine. Ooh. This is very tart, but I like it. And actually when I tasted it, when it was done fermenting, it was a lot more tart than this. So I'm hoping that time will kind of mellow this out a little bit and remove some of that tartness. But otherwise, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of digging the tart notes. It's got a really good body, like a really full body. That's a wine phrase that I've heard. But there's like some strong tannins that doesn't make this super drying, which is nice and I'm getting a lot of cranberries. Now that tart cranberry thing starts to turn into something sweeter, like a cranberry sauce that's made with lemon and orange zest. And the nuttiness is pretty subtle. It kind of stays in the background and presents more as like walnuts. But this is really fun. I really enjoy this. Ooh, ooh. What is this? Just try it. it smells good. It smells very good. Good like? Just fresh wine. Fresh wine? Ooh. Ooh, I like that. It's very fresh. Um, it's really good. I mean, so I've had pomegranate juice before. This is definitely very different, not as sweet. It's definitely sweet, but not as sweet. It does have some of the, it's like more tart than like red red wine. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like with time that might even go away. But it's really delicious and I really like the mouthfeel. It's very full bodied. I would drink that. I wrote full bodied. Oh, I wrote good body. Yeah, good body. It's good. I it's would drink that. It's not a good body. I would order that and drink it. This is the best wine you've ever made. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And let me know in the comments below if you've ever made pomegranate wine before or if you enjoy these microscope videos. Uh, my kitchen is a mess. And I am also a mess. Kitchen is a mess. I also have some on my stomach. It looks like I've murdered a pomegranate.